Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy standard grid coupling with a half spacer arrangement. The half spacer arrangement allows for an increase in the amount of shaft separation greater than the standard grid coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. For this installation, please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy installation guide for this coupling. The installation guide can be found online at Lovejoy's website utilizing the resource tab, then follow the link to the installation instructions. Once you locate the installation guide for the coupling you are installing, just click on the PDF icon to download the guide. This installation guide contains important details such as charts showing the allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain additional performance and dimensional information, important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the set screws, socket for cover bolts, an open or box end wrench for the cover bolts, a flat blade screwdriver, a soft face mallet, a straight edge, a dial indicator, vernier calipers, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a putty knife, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, and rubberized gloves. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The Lovejoy grid style coupling is ideal for connecting an engine or electric motor to fans, blowers, compressors, pumps, and other devices where some dampening of equipment vibration may be required. The grid coupling can dampen as much as 30% of vibration or shock loading when properly sized. The following components are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy grid half spacer coupling with horizontal split cover. You should have one standard grid hub, one shaft hub, one spacer grid hub, one grid spring, two cover halves, two seals, and hardware for both the split cover and the shaft hubs. Please note that the grid springs for larger couplings are made with multiple segments for ease of installation, such as this size 1080. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean up any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and the keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hubs, the grid spring, and the cover accessories should also be cleaned to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Lightly lubricate both seals and place the first seal on the shaft where the standard hub will be mounted. Then carefully stretch the second seal over the grid teeth on the spacer hub and set this hub aside until we mount the shaft hub. 
Place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly in the keyway with no side to side movement. The end of the key should line up with the end of the shaft and the hub once the hub is installed. Please note that the Lovejoy grid hubs sizes 1020 through 1090 are manufactured with two set screws and a clearance or slip fit. These hubs should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. We will mount the shaft hub on the appropriate shaft and the standard hub on the other shaft where we already placed the seal. The keys in the hub should be flush with the ends of the shafts when installed. With the torque wrench, we will tighten the set screws in both hubs to the torque specified in the installation guide. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the set screws are not tightened enough, the hub could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the set screws are too tight, they could damage the key, the shaft, or the hub. Carefully move the spacer hub into place against the shaft hub, making sure the pilot fits over the pilot on the hub. Rotate the spacer hub until the holes on the spacer hub and the shaft hub are aligned. Insert a hex head bolt with a lock washer through the shaft hub and hand tighten in the spacer hub. When all the bolts are in place, use the industry standard procedure for tightening the bolts with a torque wrench using the values specified in the installation guide. You should tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern, first to 50% of the recommended torque, then 75%, then to the full torque. Grid spacer style couplings are often used where it is not desirable to move equipment. With smaller BSEs or shaft separations, the equipment may need to be moved to provide room for mounting the hubs. If the equipment has been moved into position, or if the coupling is being installed with the equipment already in place, the gap between the ends of the hubs with the grid teeth is going to be critical. Measure the gap between the face of the hubs to ensure this shaft separation matches the G or gap dimension as specified in the installation guide. When it is not desirable to move equipment, adjustments for any minor discrepancy in the gap can be achieved by moving the standard hub. The angular and parallel alignment of the equipment shafts is critical to the life and performance of the grid style coupling. The maximum angular misalignment is only a quarter of a degree and the maximum parallel misalignment is listed in the installation guide. To check the basic alignment, start by laying a straight edge across the major diameter of the hubs. The maximum allowable parallel offset should not exceed the amount for your particular coupling size as specified in the installation guide. The angular and axial alignment can be checked using either a spacer bar or vernier calipers to measure the gap between the faces of the hubs. If space permits, this measurement should be taken as close as possible to the edge of the grid teeth at four different locations around the coupling, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. The difference between any two of these measurements should fall within the range specified in the installation guide under the heading Angular. If the deviation exceeds the Angular value specified, you will need to realign the equipment to correct this condition. If using a dial indicator to check the parallel alignment, mount the indicator on the driver's shaft with the sensor touching the hub on the opposite shaft. Rotate the shaft with the indicator to the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock positions and make notes of the deviation on the dial. If this deviation exceeds the value in the column labeled parallel, you will need to realign the equipment to correct this condition. The grid spring is a major component in this style coupling. The grid is made of spring steel and rides in the grooves located on the ends of both hubs. Torque is transmitted between the two hubs through this grid spring. The flexing of the spring allows the coupling to accommodate misalignment and dampen vibration. In order for this to happen, the metal grid spring rubs on the teeth around the hub resulting in friction and the need for lubrication. The lubrication used must be a qualified coupling grease. Lovejoy provides a list of acceptable lubricants in the installation guide. Grease is provided with coupling sizes 1020 through 1090. To install the grid spring, you will need to rotate the hubs so the teeth of the hubs are in line, then smear a light coat of coupling grease around the teeth on the hubs. 
Carefully wrap the grid spring around the hubs, lining up the grids with the hub teeth. The grid spring will need to be stretched slightly and nudged into the slots using a flat blade screwdriver, finishing with a soft faced hammer. A regular steel faced hammer will damage the grid spring and possibly the teeth on the hubs and should not be used. When the grid spring is completely seated, take a putty knife, preferably one with a soft blade, and smear the remaining grease around the outside of the grid spring. Position one of the cover halves under the grid assembly and line up the grooves with the seals. Place the two pieces of gasket material into position on the two sides of the cover. Then take the second cover half and make sure the match marks on the end of the cover halves line up with the same end of the coupling. This ensures the recesses in the cover where the fastener nuts will be located are 180 degrees apart. Then line up the seals and press the cover halves together. Insert the fasteners with the nuts fitted into the recesses provided. Hand tighten each bolt until all are in place. Then with a torque wrench, tighten each fastener to the torque specified in the installation guide. If additional grease is necessary, adding this grease can be done by inserting grease fittings into the threaded holes located in the cover halves. With sizes 1020 through 1090, the grease supplied with the coupling should be sufficient to last until the first maintenance inspection as recommended in the installation guide. Before starting up the coupling, make sure the grease holes are plugged with the grease plugs provided. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the tightness of any screws or fasteners with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. Check the coupling for any possible grease leaks or abnormalities. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If any vibration is detected, it could indicate there are alignment issues or other problems possibly related to the motor, coupling, or driven equipment. These issues should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630 Eight five two zero five hundred. Love Joy, building trust since nineteen hundred.